Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a pretty cool looking banner using paint.net. So ever since I changed my banner to this one, a lot of you guys have been asking me how I made it and they've been asking me if I, want, if I could make another tutorial, an update tutorial, because I actually already had a really popular uh, banner tutorial using paint.net on my channel but in that video I think the banner I made was it was okay but I really think the one uh, that I'm going to be showing you how to make in this video which is sort of similar to this one I'm showing you right now is generally just a lot better than that one and I think it you know I've improved and I in using paint.net so I just kind of want to give you an updated tutorial on how to make a sort of a better banner. So if you're new to my channel, uh, that's not that really matters to you, but uh, I'm going to show you how to make a banner similar to this one. This is tutorial will kind of be uh, sort of quicker and because I don't want to make the tutorial too long because this does take a pretty long time to make. So uh, if you have any, if you're pretty new to paint.net, which is this program which is what we'll be using right now i really recommend watching my old paint.net tutorials which i go into more detail about all the different uh, effects and how to use the program and all the windows and stuff or just going and searching uh the paint.net beginner's guide on youtube because this guide will be for people who already sort of know the ins and outs of the program because i don't want to be sort of explaining every little thing because that would just take way too long it will extend the video so if you're new to paint.net I recommend uh, either doing exa exactly what I do, which I really don't recommend to do because I want you to do your own thing for your own channel or go and search paint.net beginner's guide or something. So let's get straight to it. So what you need first is actually a YouTube banner template. So I kind of recommend something that looks like this one because it's simple. There's no other overlays and stuff and it's transparent. So the, the gray and white checkered background you see, that means that the photo is a PNG or it is transparent. So it's not actually gonna be a checkered background. You can just see underneath it. Right click, copy. And uh, actually the first thing you wanna do is actually go to image, canvas size and resize the picture to make it with 2560 and the height 1440, 1440. So that is 1440p resolution. Pretty big, but that is what YouTube recommends for your banner size. So uh, this is gonna be what our background will be. We'll just leave it as a white for now. So add a new layer by pressing this button right here in the bottom left of the layers tab. And I recommend name your layer so you can just be more uh, organized. I'm just gonna call it the template and make sure you leave this template layer always on the top. So again, right click, copy and control V to paste it. So now it is pasted. So what I mean by transparent is if I change the background into anything, uh, you can see it what's underneath it. So as you can see, I'm not affecting the top layer because if I uh, delete, if I uncheck the background, if it makes the, the bottom vis invisible, this thing is separate. So layers, uh, you guys already probably know what they are, but they just separate at, at each uh, picture that you've added. And you really need to have a lot of layers for this. So now you have your template, you wanna choose and decide what your background will be. So this depends all on what type of videos you make or what your personality is or, or whatever. Uh, in the example here, as you can see, my background is sort of a, a city skyline that's tinted blue and that's sort of blurred out. And I really like the look of it. I thought it looks pretty cool. But again, your background can be anything you want it to be. Uh, just what you think fits on your channel. Uh, each channel has a different looking banner and you don't have to uh, do exactly what I'm showing you here, but this is sort of inspired by this example. So I'm just going to be doing the city skyline because I, I want to show you exactly how I made my banner in particular. So again, I would just go to Google Images, search for city skyline, I guess, um, images, and choose whatever sky you think looks good. I'm going to do this one because I used this before and I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, right click, copy image. Go back to paint.net uh, press ctrl a and delete on your keyboard to delete uh, the white color and press ctrl v to paste your picture in so hold shift and drag this on the bottom left to resize it holding shift make sure that the image won't be warped because if i let go of shift as you can see you can warp the image and you don't want that so hold shift and it will stay the exact aspect ratio of the original picture so i'm gonna put it up there holding shift and then move it up. And by the way, the tool that uh, is automatically used that I'm using right now is called the Move Selected Pixels tool. Uh, all this does is it moves uh, uh, assets around. So as you can see, I added like a blue colored tint and the photo was all blurred out. So to do that, you go to the background layer, go to effects, blurs, Gaussian blur. And I recommend putting the radius up to about maybe 11. That's a pretty good blur. Also, if you guys are wondering why I have so many effects in my effects tab, you may not have as many as me, you may have more, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you 
just installed paint on it recently and don't have any new effects, I recommend going to forums.getpaint.net and slash forum slash 44 dash plugin dash packs because uh, basically you want to install what are called effects plugins on paint.net they add a lot more extra plugins that the default paint.net doesn't give you which makes things a lot easier for you and has a lot of cool features you can add so I won't be using all of them so if you don't have them there's also another way to do drop shadow don't worry I'll show you that later I really recommend installing your own plugin packs this is optional but is really recommended I really recommend it because it makes things so much easier and as you see here, I have a lot more tools and cool things I can do. So I will leave all these links in the description. And also you want some cool fonts. So I recommend going on defont.com to get cool fonts. All right, so now we're done with that. Uh, it's all blurred again. So now what you wanna do is add another layer. Again, add new layer. And this is gonna be what the color is. So I did a blue here. So I'm just gonna do maybe a yellow. I'm gonna sort of invert the color. So in the text will be blue and the background will be yellow. But again, you can choose any color you want. You're not restricted to what I'm using here. I'm just going to call it this color tint. So now go to the paint bucket. Choose the color you want. I'm going to do like a, a dark yellow, almost orange. And now click left click and it will fill the whole canvas with yellow. So now that is the color tint. And make sure again, if it's on a different layer, it means it is completely separate and it is on top. So if I move the color tint down, the background will be, the city skyline will be on top. So I'm going to put this over the background. And make sure, you, uh, again, your template is over everything because you need that. Because these are the parameters of which you will see everything. Oh yeah, that I, I didn't explain to you what the template is for. Basically, this whole rectangle here, this whole rectangle is what the computer will see. This rectangle is what tablets will see. And this smaller rectangle is what mobile phones will see and everything will see. So every device. All right, so go uh, go to color tint and you want to, again, you can't see the skyline. So go to adjustments, transparency, and bring the transparency to the left a bit. So it's bring it's sort of making the picture faded out a bit. And you can see the skyline in the background. So I think that's a good enough transparency. You can still see it and you can have the yellow. I think that's a good balance. Press OK and now you're done. So uh, you can leave the color tint and the background on separate layers, but since we're not going to be changing anything with that anyways, I recommend going clicking the color tint which is on top and pressing this merge layer down. Uh, what this does is it connects the color tint and the background layer so that they're on the same layer. Because right now, as you can see, if I move everything, it is se completely separate. If I move the background, it is separate. Uh, Control Z to undo that. So, but now if I press merge layer down by selecting, make sure I have the top layer selected, merge layer down, it merges the two layers. So now they are uh, connected and, you know, they're merged together. If you want to be more complicated and if you want to look better, you can, you know, do some cool stuff. Like if you add a paintbrush here and make it uh, a darker-ish yellow, slightly darker, bring the brush width up to about a... 300 or so bring the hardness down as you can see if i add it on the top it adds a cool little yellow shadow on the top and the bottom right there it's really subtle but it's what i have here as you can see you, uh, you can't see the top of the city because it's blocked by uh, the brush that i had there which is the same oops which is the same that now i added there i think it looks cool so i'm gonna leave it at that and again uh, merge layer down so now the whole thing is on one layer okay so now we are done with our background so now we want to add your text add a new layer I would call it uh, logo or it's not really a logo it's, it's just your your name and choose the font you want so this is where the website I showed you here thefont.com comes in and you also want to use a font that says that doesn't say free for personal use because that means you can't use it if you're gonna be using it for commercial purposes you want to find a font that says like 100% free or just completely free so that you can use it for anything you can use any font you want again the font choice is really up to you it's whatever goes with the style of your channel uh choose that font so uh the font that i have here is called single sleeve which i think looks pretty cool so i'm gonna choose that go to s down here single sleeve and choose the color you want i'm gonna make it a light blue because i'm inverting the colors that i have in the example go to the text tool and choose make it a pretty big i'm doing 192 is that big enough let's see i'm gonna do your name here so it's pretty long so yeah okay that, i think that's pretty good size 
because you don't want the text to be too big like you don't want it filling up the whole thing because it just doesn't look too good uh, you want it slightly small so i'm gonna do 192 and you can put it exactly in the center but as you can see in the example i had here let me make it a bit bigger uh i had it not centered to the right a bit because i had my logo on the left side so I'm just gonna put this on my second monitor so it makes things easier for me. Uh, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna move my text slightly to the right here. And I think that's good because I'm gonna add my logo on, on this side. Uh, what I had in my example is I had what's called a gradient, which means I had a light color and then it uh, uh, gradually faded to the darker color on the bottom of the text. To do that, what you wanna do is go to the magic wand, hold shift and select one letter and it will select everything that's the same color. Then go to the gradient tool, and in colors, make sure you have your primary color as the light version of the color you want, and the secondary color, which is the bottom right square right here, which is white, make it a dark version of the color you want. So you, I want, we want, if you're gonna do a blue gradient, you wanna do a light blue to a dark blue. If you're gonna do a yellow gradient, do a light yellow to maybe an orange or something. And, and it seems with any color. So I'm gonna do a light blue, make sure that's a primary, which is the top left square, bottom right square, which is secondary, make it a dark color, dark version of the color you want, and drag your mouse from the top of the text, drag it down to the bottom. Hold shift so it's a so it, it's a straight line. So the dot the bottom color is a little bit too dark, so I'll make it a bit lighter. And I think that looks pretty good. So if you press the select there, that's what it will look like. But as you notice, it sort of looks flat. It's it just sort of put on there. It doesn't look too good. So what I want to do is add sort of a shadow slash 3D slash depth effect to the text. Uh, that is the same here. As you can see, there's a, a dark area on the bottom of the text, and it's really easy to do that. All you have to do is go to the logo layer, duplicate it by pressing the duplicate layer button. And on the bottom layer, that's the, the, the bottom duplicate that's on the bottom underneath it. You want to do is go to the magic, the move selected pixels, and make sure you drag it straight down. All right, so make it as straight as you can down. So, so as you can see, it looks sort of weird <laughs> because we haven't changed the color. So now what you want to do is make sure you're still on the bottom. Go to adjustments, hue slash saturation, and bring the lightness all the way down to about negative 60 or something. Now, as you can see, it, there's a cool shadow effect underneath the text. Press OK. And it looks sort of like a 3D drop shadow effect. And I think it looks pretty good. You can also make it like like that or like that or whatever. But I like the look and the design if it goes straight down. Because it's like a sort of 3D-ish effect. So now I like that. Press deselect. And once again, you can merge the two layers down so that they're connected. So as you can see, they're disconnected from each other. So go to the top layer. Oops. Go to the top layer, press merge layer down. Now they are all connected. Next, I added a sort of a subtitle and a, a, like a description of my channel. So I added Justin the Yo-Yo Gaming and Technology because as my channel is. So I'm gonna do that right now. So deselect everything, add a new layer again. And this time you wanna choose a different font, but one that sort of matches this one. Uh, the font that I did on my banner was called uh, Fixedis uh, Excelsior 3.01. It is like a sort of pixelated robotic type font, as you can see right there. It's like pixelated. It's like those old school fonts, like on DOS. Uh, and I like the look of that because you know it's sort of like a gaming look. So, and that's what my channel is. But again, any font you want, and make sure it sort of matches this font. They make sure it's not like this where it doesn't match at all. It looks sort of weird. So I'm gonna choose that font. It's called Fixedis. Excelsior 3.01 and all these fonts are on thefont.com. So make it smaller and do whatever you want and call it. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to do like, a, I don't know, best YouTuber. <laughs> so I'm going to add that. There we go. Actually, I'm going to make it all caps. I think that looks good. Best YouTuber. There we go. So now, and I had it, I had it directly underneath my original logo text. So Again, what I'm going to do is go back to the make it a gradient. So uh, in my example, I had it uh, a, a gray gradient. So I had it from a white to a dark gray and go back to the gradient tool, make the first color white, make the second color a light gray and which is right here. And again, drag down. I recommend going from halfway at this if you're doing like a white. And I think that looks pretty good. If you do actually the bottom is a bit too dark. There we go. So if we deselect it, I think that looks pretty good. So uh, again, it looks flat. So I'm going to do the same thing we did before. Duplicate the layer. 
on the bottom one, move it down, and then go to adjustments, hue slash saturation, and it, auto it automatically keeps the settings you had before, lightness, negative 65, okay. Now it looks pretty cool, has that 3D effect, drop shadow effect. So now, once you have that, I'm gonna move the layer down again. I'm gonna name it uh, subtitle. So I'm gonna make it slightly bigger so we can fit exactly to the size of my logo. And to do that, all you have to do is press, uh, go to the rectangle select, select the text or whatever you have, and go to move selected pixels. And now you can resize it, move it around, rotate it, right like that. So I'm gonna resize it, make it bigger. There we go. Again, in the example we had, I just had my my YouTube logo in a PNG, so the background was transparent, and I just had it behind the text and stuff. So again, you can do any picture you want, again, or you can just not have it whatsoever and just center any, everything. The choice is up to you. So for now, um, I don't know what logo to do. I'm just gonna do like an emoji. Uh, <laughs> I know it's stupid, but oh yeah, type in emoji PNG, so the background will be transparent. There we go, heart emoji PNG. It's an example, okay? You can do your logo or any picture you want. So right click, copy, add a new layer. Call it your your picture. Press control V. Now you have it pasted in there. There you go. Hope you like that. I, I wanna put it behind the, our logos like that. <laughs> so again, of course the emoji doesn't match at all with what we're doing. So I recommend adding whatever your YouTube logo is. Um, or just any picture that you think would, you know, your subscribers would understand. So now I just, I had mine rotated and I had my, I actually had my, my name, uh, let me select my name. I actually had my name over the picture a bit. It was like over it. Same with the subtitle. Select it. Move the pixels. It was, I think it was exactly like that. That's exactly how I had my banner. If I deselect everything, now we are pretty close to being finished. So... Um, of course, it's not going to be exactly like what we had there, but it's it's pretty similar. It's the same concept. Yeah, like that. So now we're going to add the drop shadow. So as you can see, this looks fine by itself, but we want to add uh, an actual blurred out shadow to it. So to do that, uh, again, if you go to effects, object, drop shadow, you can easily do that with the effect. But uh, if you don't have the effect, then what you can do is duplicate the layer on the bottom layer on the bottom duplicate go to adjustments hue slash saturation and make sure you bring the lightness all the way down to negative 100 and now go to effects blurs gaussian blur and blur it all the way up and as you can see it adds a cool uh drop shadow but as you can see it's a bit too much so i'm gonna bring it down a bit uh maybe a bit more down i think that looks pretty cool so that is the drop shadow effect if i deselect the top layer that is what it is, it's just the, the duplicated layer that's black and that's Gaussian blurred out. I'm gonna merge the layers down again, and you can do that with the titles too. But before we do the black drop shadow for the background, I actually had an inner, a white inner shadow inside the text. So this is something that's completely optional and something that you you can only achieve with a, a plugin, which is again, you can find it right here. So um, what I have is if, if I go to effects, object, inner shadow, as you can see, it adds basically an, an inner shadow. It takes a while to load, there you go. So add sort of like a, a shadow inside of the text and I made it white. So it adds like a sort of tint effect or bevel effect. I brought the shadow length up a bit and also brought the blur radius up. And once it loads here, it adds sort of like an inner white tint. Like there's a light shining from the top left corner of the text. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I think it looks pretty cool. And that's what I added with my uh, banner. So press okay this is what it looks like without it and this is what it looks like with it i think it looks pretty cool but again you pr if you don't have the plugin installed you won't have it so you don't have to do this it's totally fine but i want to do that for my subtitle there we go so now both the logos have an in a white inner shadow so now we can add the black drop shadow now duplicate it again Control shift u so you can easily open up the hue slash saturation make it totally black by bringing the lightness all the way down effects blurs gaussian blur you add a cool background. Merge layer down. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing with the bottom subtitle. And there we go. So guys, we are basically done right now. And that is basically it. Let's see, if, is there anything else added to the banner? Uh, let's move this to the left. And no, 
I didn't think I had any, anything else. Again, this is just how I made my banner. You can make your banner any way you want. Uh, you can just take this uh, video for inspiration and use it to make adapt it to your own style, to your own channel. But basically, that is how I made my banner. Uh, it's not too too difficult if you try to you know if you get used to using Paint.net by making thumbnails with it every single day, then this all comes natural, starts com becoming natural to you. So yeah, that's basically the gist of how I made my banner. So. Now what you want to do is if you want to uh, eventually change the banner in, your, in the future, I recommend doing file, save as, and save it as a .pdn. This is basically like a .psd for Photoshop, which means you can open the, open the file and it will open up the whole project with all the layers saved and everything. But I don't need to do this because this is a tutorial. So I recommend, I actually do recommend doing that and I call it like a banner work in progress or something so you know that this is this will open the, the paint.net file so now once you're done you actually want to delete the template layer because you don't want these black bars press x delete to, de to delete the layer i forgot to merge the layer down there now you're done so i think it looks done it looks pretty cool you can add whatever you want to it go to file save as again and this time instead of .pdn you want to save it as a .jpeg you can do a, a png with the, the quality there's not really much difference between png and jpeg and the png the file sizes are really big so i recommend jpeg because the quality is still good name it whatever you want i'm gonna call it tutorial banner because it is the tutorial banner .j, .jpeg and press save and make sure the quality is all the way up to 100. Don't worry, the file size, as you can see, it's only 500 kilobytes, which is very, very small. Now press OK. Make sure you press flatten, and there you go, you're all done. And once you press flatten, that means you can't edit everything else. So as you can see, it flattened all the layers down to one thing. So you can't edit it anymore, but you can actually do, you actually can if you don't click out of the, the window. You can, if you go back here to the history and go to merge layer down, you can still have all the layers, but it's flattened for now once you click out of it. And again, I recommend saving it so you can have it saved. So now here it is, guys. If we go to tutorial banner dot G, uh, dot G, JPG, there is your awesome looking banner that you made with paint.net. So now go to your YouTube channel, go to on the top right corner, press that pen. Go to edit channel art, press select a photo from your computer, and then select that photo. Of course, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to change my manner, but you, just, you would press open, OK, and then just follow the steps. It's really easy. And then you would have your new shiny looking banner uh, on your YouTube channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it wasn't too long or confusing. Again, if you're confused of what I did here, I recommend looking up paint.net beginner's guide and it will you can easily learn how to do it, uh, everything that I did there. And again, I also really recommend downloading some paint.net plugin packs. They're really easy to download. You just go, it, it's a forum. So they tell you exactly how to download it. So each way is different too. If, if I go to one here, as you can see, it tells you exactly how to download it and everything. There's even an installer for some of them. So it's really easy. It's pretty self-explanatory. What that does, it adds all those effects that you saw earlier I had. And you can add the inner shadow and the drop shadow and it makes things a lot easier for you. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. But yeah, for now, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Peace out.